Welcome back to our electronics course. Today we have another problem. We have a charged particle and the origin, but now there are two fields, a magnetic field and an electric field that perpendicular to each other. We have a magnetic field in the direction of x, we have an electric field in the direction of z. So they are perpendicular to each other. In the last lectures, they were parallel, either in x direction or one opposite to, 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 the other, to the other one, one in x and one in the minus x. Okay. The initial conditions at t equal to zero, the, the motion starts from the origin. And the initial velocity in the x direction and the y direction is zeros. We have only constant velocity from z in the direction of z. We will do the analysis as usual. We will first calculate the forces applied on this particle due to the magnetic and the electric fields. The electric force comes from the electric field. It's equal to the charge multiplied by the electric field. The electric field, we assume it's uniform, constant, does not change with time or displacement in the direction of z. The magnetic force is Q, V, cross B, as usual. We don't know exactly where this charge will go in the 3D, uh, as, a 3D, as, as a 3D motion. So we'll assume that the velocity of this charge will be a general uh, term, have all components in x direction and y direction and z direction. So the velocity of this charge, we'll assume it is in the 3D direction. Vx in x plus Vy in y plus Vz in z. A component in x, a component in y, a component in z. Cross B, and B as a vector is B in the direction of x. Also, it's a uniform magnetic field, doesn't change with time or displacement. The total force exerted on this charged particle is the addition, the vector addition of these two forces, Fe and Fm. And the cross product of this uh, magnetic force, we saw it before in the previous lectures, it's equal to minus uvybez plus qvzbe1. And this is the electric force. So this is the total force applied to this charge q. And any force is equal to a mass multiplied by an acceleration. As we do for the velocity, we assume that the acceleration has three components as well. A component in x, the derivative of vx by t in the direction of x. Another component in the y direction, dy by t in the y direction. Another component in z direction, dvz by t az. Let's now equate the uh, x component in both sides and the ay components in both sides and az component in, in, in both sides. For the x component, we have here a component in x, but we have no component C in x. So, m dvx by dt is equal to zero. Integrating this equation, dx is equal to constant, because the integration of a zero is constant. Why? Because the derivative of a constant is zero. At x, at time equal to z, at t equal to zero, is the velocity in x direction is equal to zero. So, c equal to zero. So, dx is zero. X is the derivative of the or the I'm sorry the integration of the x, the velocity in x direction. The integration of zero is also constant. And at x equal to zero, the charge was at the origin at x equal to zero. So c equal to zero. This means that we have no motion at all in the x direction, either positive x or negative x. Because x is equal to zero and vx is equal to zero. All the time. Let's now go to the other two directions, y and z. So, first, equating the component in z direction in this, in this equation, this equation. Here we have two components, because this is a vector addition between the magnetic force and the, and the electric force. We have here q x i minus q v y b. This is this component in the direction of z. And here we have m dv by m dv z by t in the direction of z. So this is the first equation. 
and this is the second equation that came from equating the, the component of y direction here and y direction these two equations are a little bit different than the two equations we saw before in the previous lectures in the previous lectures this term was zero there was no qxi in this equation the solution of this uh, differential equation is simple also but with extra term we can do the same analysis done before in the previous lectures to get a final equation, final derivative, uh, differential equation for the vy only or vz only. We will see an extra term in the, in the previous lectures. We have only d2 vy by, d, by, d2, by d, uh, t squared plus omega squared vy equal to 0. Here we have a, an extra term minus xi over b omega squared. And also omega is equal to qb over m. This differential equation has a similar solution but with this extra term xi over b so vy is equal to a cosine plus d sine plus xi over b to know a and d the constants we go to the initial condition d equal to 0 v y equal to v root y equal to 0 so we will conclude that a the constant a is equal to minus xi over b 0 equal to a cosine 0 is equal to 1 plus d sine 0 is equal to 0 plus x over b so a is equal to minus x over b and you can do no more from v1 so how to calculate d? let's go to vz we know that qvzb qvzb is equal to m the derivative of v1 by the, by the time so we we'll differentiate this equation according to time so QVZB is equal to M dV over D is equal to M omega minus XI over B sine omega T plus D cosine omega T. At T equal to 0, VZ, VZ is equal to V naught Z. So we will conclude that D equal to 0. So after getting B, we will get our two equations for VY and VZ. VY will be minus XI over B multiplied by cosine omega T minus 1. And VZ will be xi over b sine omega t integrating this equation will give us y y equal to xi over omega b omega t minus sine omega t and integrating, integrating this equation will give us the distance or displacement z z equal to xi over omega b 1 minus cosine omega t as we see here the only difference between these two equations is that the motion in y displacement is dependent on t there is increasing in the distance traveled uh, along the y-axis as the time goes on actually these two, two equations form what's called cycloid so the particle, the q particle here will move along this cycloid curve what is a cycloid? the cycloid is just a rotating circle along some axis here we have y is dependent on the time I mean the distance traveled along the y axis is increasing with time so this cycle will rotate over the y axis if we choose this point the bottommost point which we call b dash here as the cycle rotates this point will move along this black curve and we form the cycloid so the particle will start from here going along this black curve here to complete one full cycle and begin another cycle so from this point to this point it's a complete cycle I mean the circle rotates until it reaches it to its the original position in which b dash point is bottommost and a dash point is the topmost after half a cycle this circle will be flipped b dash will be the, top, the, top, the topmost point and a dash will be the bottommost point after this point this cycle will continue 
It's observable that this distance is just the circumference of this circle. It's equal to 2 by r. And this distance is the diameter of this circle, 2r. So we can determine the radius of this circle using two ways. Let's start with the first way. This distance is equal to 2 by r. And at the same time, when the particle moves from this point to this point, it makes a complete cycle. So omega t is equal to 2 by. This point is along the y-axis. So this distance is along the y-axis. Here y is equal to 0. And this point is, is y and omega t equal to 2 bar. So put omega t here in this equation equal to 2 bar. And y equal to 2 by is just 2 by r. So this equal xi over omega b, 2 by omega t equal to y, minus sine 2 by. Sine 2 by, of course, is equal to 0. So this will be equal to xi 2 by over omega b. And this is equal to 2 by r. 2 by will cancel to y, so r equal to xi over omega b. Let's do the same thing from the second way from the z-axis. Let's omit this. When the cycle reaches this point, it makes half a cycle. So, at this point, omega d is equal to 2 pi over 2 which is equal to pi. Now it's at that point. Okay, half a second. Let's now substitute in the z equation. So z equal to at omega t equal to pi xi over omega b. 1 minus cosine and omega t equal to y. Cosine y is equal to minus 1, and there is minus in the original uh, equation, so minus will cancel minus, give us positive, so this will be 2, so this is equal to psi over omega b. And this is equal to 2r, the diameter. 2 will cancel 2, so r equal to xi over omega b. So, the particle under perpendicular electric field and the magnetic field will go through or move through a cycloid. This cycloid is formed by a circle with the radius r. This radius is equal to xi over omega b.